Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be trying out a technique that I've had in the back of my mind for a while. This is my first attempt and it kind of worked out great, so I'm glad I was filming. And the thing I'm going to be trying to recreate is a dip dye look. You may have seen this look um, with calligraphy or wedding invitations, things like that. The actual way you make dip dye uh, is actually, you know, is actually dipping some watercolor paper or some thicker paper into um, some dye ink or some dye, and you dip it multiple times, and so and and you change how long you leave it in the the dye each time, and you get a little bit of an ombre look. So I'm going to try to mimic that look using watercolors today. So the first thing I did was I wet the edge of some watercolor paper. This is some Arches cold press paper. I just wanted to soften that so that I could tear it a little bit more easily. And then I adhered this to my board here. This is just a hard board and I only taped it on the sides and top. The watercolors I'm going to be using today are from Kuratake Zig. This is the Gonzai Tombi palette. And I'm starting out with a nice red shade. This is the red that's in the very top right corner. And I will show you all of the colors that I use for my watercolor painting today. I'll show you the palette at the very end of the painting portion, and I'll point out which colors I used. So I started by bringing that color pretty far up onto my watercolor piece. And this watercolor paper is actually slightly larger than four and a quarter by five and a half. I chose that size because I wanted to be able to tape off the sides, but still have the color all the way to the edge when I trim it down for my card. So after that first initial layer was dry, I brought in some more color and I didn't bring the color all the way up to the, the previous layer. I'm doing this in different uh, stages and bringing that color farther and farther down. Whenever you can see a line forming, I'm gonna go ahead and just go over that with my paintbrush once more to smooth it out. Hit that with my heat tool once again. Then I'm gonna bring in even more color. And each time I bring in more color, I'm going to have it be a little bit more concentrated in pigment because I really want to intensify the saturation at the bottom of this watercolor. I'm going to go ahead and soften that top edge. And I'm actually going to have it kind of angle up on the one side. I've noticed that in a lot of dip dye examples that I've seen online that sometimes the paper isn't dipped in completely flat. And so you get some really fun angles and it has a nice softening effect. So each layer that I'm adding, I'm making sure that after I put that initial color on, that I go over that very top edge just to soften it out just a little bit because I don't want it to be a really harsh line. So once again, I'm adding more color. And at this point, I've switched colors. I'm going to more of a violet red shade. You can see it in the palette on the side. It's on the edge of the palette. It's that kind of purple shade near the bottom. So I'm, keep, I'm adding more and more and drying in between. And eventually I'll go ahead and switch to a very deep purple. And this is the color I'm going to finish off the bottom of the faux dip dye. And I'm bringing this up quite a ways, maybe an inch to an inch and a quarter from the bottom of this watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and soften that top edge like I've done in the past. I'm basically dipping my brush in clean, clear water dabbing it off quickly on a paper towel, and then softening that top edge. And then I'm going to dry it once again, and then I'm going to bring in a very intense purple at the bottom. As I've been painting each of these layers, I'm making sure that I bring that color all the way down to that rough edge at the very bottom, because I really want it to look like this paper has been dipped into dye. And if it was dipped all the way into the dye that the, um, that color would go all the way through to the back of the paper. And so that torn edge would be completely coated in color. So I'm making sure I do that with each one of these layers. Making sure I get those edges really well. And it's darkening up all of those spots. And then I'll hit that with my heat tool and then let it dry completely. The back of the watercolor paper was still a little bit wet. I could tell because it was the paper was really bowing up. So there's that first red I used, then I moved to this more reddish purple, and then eventually to the dark red. So if you want to recreate um, this card with those specific colors, you can use those. 
Now I'm taking some shimmer paper. This is actually a six by six sheet from a die cuts with a view uh, pad. It's the glitzy glitter pad. I'm not sure if it's still being sold, but if it is, I will definitely link it down in the supply section. But I basically wanted to use the big Valentine's Day die set from Simon Says Stamp. And I die cut that in that gold shimmer paper. And because I put some stick it adhesive on the back of the paper before I die cut it. I already have adhesive to apply this die cut onto my watercolor piece. So I'm just uh, using some tweezers to apply that. And this, using stick it on the back of a very intricate die like this is a great way to adhere your dies, your die cuts, without a lot of hassle. Now this die cut in particular is quite dainty, so it is a little bit more uh, you can be a little more clumsy with it, I suppose, but in the end, it worked out just fine and I was able to get that on there. I did pull out the packaging for the die and had that off to the side so that I could make sure that I put the letters down in the same formation as the original die. So that's the card for today. This is part of a blog hop for Simon Says Stamp, so please head over to my blog for more details on that. Until then, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.